Hello everyone, welcome to yoga. I'm not in the barn and I'm not at Bon Vo. Um, I'm at my own place uh, because we, we've all had to isolate, not only because of the lockdown, but um, because we have uh, COVID on the property there. Everyone is well and um, we're almost at the, the end of it. So I hope you're all well. And when I say everybody, I actually look at the list. So it's lovely to recognize so many of you. And it's wonderful to be practicing together. So what I'm going to do today, what we're going to do is <clears throat> go over the key things we've done, which we've done often, but beginner's mind is the best mind to have. And then I want to look a little bit at ankles and feet and start to see what that means for some of the big themes we've been talking about. This is really helpful for hip problems, for lower back issues, um, uh, and leg tightness issues. But um, it's impossible to separate what goes on in the upper body from the lower body, or in the front of the body from the back of the body. So anybody who has a body knows that. Anybody who is anybody knows that. So, um, so of course, you'll, you'll realize that, you know, whenever we focus in one area, the neck or the shoulders, you realize this has profound implications for the feet or for the digestion, because the body is constantly moving as one piece, which is what we are and what we're called to be, to be one, to be whole. So we're going to start with what I think is a really, really, really important movement. And um, of course, lying on the floor is wonderful. And of course, we all, you know, if I've been at the computer, I need to lie on the floor. But it doesn't mean that you can't practice for five minutes in the shower or in the kitchen while you're waiting for the kettle to boil. And uh, so you don't, we don't need to start on our backs. It's wonderful. We never stop. That's a wonderful thing to do. And it's wonderful to, to decide to sit on the floor and have a cup of tea and to decide to lie down on the floor in your home. That is a wonderful thing. It doesn't always have to be the couch or the bed. But this is a very, very important movement for the human family who is about to fall into the internet. And uh, it's important for this reason. I'll just, I will just want to put this image in your uh, minds and bodies. So pelvises can be going this way, you know, and that's very beautiful. You can be a saint or a Buddha with your pelvis that way, or pelvises can be going that way. And of course, there is rotations, but the two big kind of ways that pelvises sit between the legs is this way and this way. Both have positives and both have negatives if we go too far. You can see I have a tendency to be here, and this just leads me into all these kinds of tightnesses. <clears throat> but what happens for everybody is that when we go to sit, if you look at my back hand, when we go to sit by now, we're all doing this flexion, bend. And the bend is happening in here, whether you're my pattern or the other pattern. We bend here and then we sit. And then we're not sitting on good foundations. And so the back and the discs and the tissue begins to struggle, but the upper body begins to struggle. And we don't realize that we're building layers of tightness through the lower back pelvis, pelvic floor, into the legs, and into feet that are grasping. And we don't realize that this is not just a muscle that's tight. It's across systems that we get these tightnesses. Then we go for a walk, or we chop carrots, and we start to spread this around, whereas the body is always looking to group and ungroup to tighten and release, to breathe in, to breathe out, to be born, to die. So that's why we've done this a lot. That's why um, whether you've started lying on your back or not, it's very important to get onto your hands and knees like this 
and just to begin to let this movement. So I'm going to give you all time to get on the floor, get your mats, you know, to begin to let your spines hang down. I'm not pushing, I'm not arching my back muscles. I'm just letting it go. So you can see my pelvis is now arching that way. And my tail is going up. And so I'm beginning to have an impact on the layers of tissue of my back and pelvis, these strong muscles of the bone, and my hamstrings and the back of the pelvic floor. And that's the most important area that as we let the spine go this way, the back of the pelvic floor widens, widens. And we just need to hang out, you know, you can put your Kindle here and read like that. That's it. And if, if, it, if it bothers your wrists, you can be on your elbows or you can roll up something soft under your wrist like this. Yeah. This is a very, 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 very profound, sophisticated and systemic movement. Don't worry if you've been told that you're letting your ribs hang out. This, these things can be tended to if necessary at another time. Just don't be active in your back. Let it drop. And you can see that I can let my spine drop and let my organs hang and let my head hang. So I can have my antlers going down. Or once the head is up, it's sustained up because the pressure pushes up into my throat. So you can play with both. And at the back, your squirrel's tail is up. And then we make just little movements. Yeah. So the movements help us to understand what we're doing, because that's how we know. We know by moving. We don't know, as Descartes thought, by thinking. We, we move in a world, and the world unveils itself to us through movement. Mm. So just these little movements backwards and forwards, side to side, while I let this hang, I let all of this hang through. Every vertebra, every disc is now talking to each other. Yeah, I can feel I've been, you know, working this morning and I can feel that in here I've tightened. Yeah. And then I start to let my Squirrel's tail go down, and I start to let my antlers go down. So I'm letting the ends of the river, the ends of my axis move. And so my spine moves and my belly comes up, but I'm not being active on these muscles in the middle, muscles of the back, muscles of the front. They are working, but it's more like my attention is on the antlers and on the tail. Well, because of my pattern to be more like this, I can feel when I'm up here that there's a, a place in my back that could move more. And it, it's changing all the time, my whole life. You know, I don't need to fret about it, but I've gotten to know this area. But for you, it could be other parts of your back. And it can be helpful to release the elbows like I'm doing, just to help you. If you want to squeeze with your tummy muscles a little bit and your bottom muscles for a moment, you can. And then we're just going to let the tail come up and the antlers come up and we're letting the spine drop through. And then again, I move, which helps me to learn and remap. And now that we've been doing this for a while, if you're joining for the first time, all these classes are available for free on a link which we publish each time. So you can go and have a look. Basically, we've done, I don't know, seven different things since March and uh, looking at them from different angles. Um, and I, I think that this is how we become empowered to move and to build our own movement practice and not be too precious and yogic and I don't know what about it, but just to move. It's so beautiful to move and to learn how amazing the body is, even though we're all different. Yeah. So now my tail is up, my antlers are up. Now my tail comes down, my antlers go down, I release my elbows a bit, and I'm just letting I'm letting the whole spine move. Now the tail comes up and the antlers, 
And I'm not thinking of my spine like a tube that I bend this way and that way. I'm thinking of my spine as a river, if you watch my hand, which it is. It is a river. It's not a stick. It's not a column. It never was. It's a river. It began very soft. Later bones come along, but the bones are just salmon or rocks in the river. So, yeah. And in fact, you can play with undulating like this, undulating, letting the river move, letting the river dragon swim in the river. You can undulate, just continue to have a tail, continue to have antlers, relax into the exploration. Yeah, usually when we change position and come away from the kitchen counter or the computer or whatever we were doing, it's then often that we have insights. There's a shift in mood and then we go, oh, that's what that's about. Or, that's what happened with that person. And because the moving body is the moving person. So all of those things that we're working on shift and change. Very good. Very good. And then I'm going to lean into my bum, just like this. Do you see? I was kind of vertical and now I'm kind of leaning. I just lean back and I can feel that I'm leaning into my bum and my sit bones as if I was, you know, sitting. And I can feel that the sit bones widen from each other. So now we're going a little bit deeper. I curl my toes under. I lean in a bit more. You don't want to go too far back because you can see when I start to be here, my pelvis tips down and I'm doing something different. We want to lean, but you want to have the feeling that your back can hang through, that your tail can be up, that the body as you attend to the breath can do something new and delicious. It's, it's, not, it's not a problem. Even those of us who live with pain or discomfort, we just, we just acknowledge and we, we work with it within the limits of that. So we're like this. So if, if it is uncomfortable for you to be, I'm just going to get a chair. <coughs> um, we've, we've looked at this before. You can come up onto a chair. Same thing, you can, or on your sofa if you want something softer, and you can lean back, lean back. And it's the same, it's the same if I had to do it standing. I just lean down, so I plie, I bend my knees, and I just lean into my bump. So, and it's the same, you can see my back arches, my tail comes up. Just gravity is pouring through you in a different way, that's all. So we, we tuck the toes under. We tuck the toes under. We lean back. Just take a moment to now be with a sense of weight in your body. So we looked at the kind of shape and how the parts move together. We're reviewing something we've done a lot of times in different ways. So. Now I can feel, I just give myself time to feel as my femurs, the big bones of my upper leg kind of separate and lean back and I widen across the back of the pelvic floor. I can feel that I'm actually letting go through my thighs, which are a bit bossy and chatty. I'm letting the weight drop through onto the knees. And I just felt my breath release longer, the out breath, so I'm more with my weight. And at some point, my forehead falls to the floor. So take your time with that. I'm going to get... <coughs> I'm going to get a blanket because this yoga mat stamps your forehead for a week. So then I have too many things to explain. Yeah. Yeah.
<laughs> so you're like this, you've leaned back, your toes are bent under. The toes give you a, a clearer connection to your pelvic floor. You can do without, but I like to do the toes also because bending the big toe is linked to this movement in walking. So, but you know, you can explore and experiment. So off you go, down, 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 down. So, yeah, and then, Just through the weight, you're anchoring in the legs and you're anchoring in the toes. And now your forehead is dropping to the floor. So you can play with the width of your arms. It's very playful. You can, I need to just have slightly less sliding arms. Yeah, so you can, you can widen your arms. You can lengthen forward. All of this from here all the way around to here is a different support and it's causing a different, wonderful bridging work of the shoulders, the elbows, the whole glove of the forearm. If it bothers you, you can bring your arms here. Even if it doesn't bother you, you can bring your arms here too. Or one, you know, if you have one shoulder that really isn't happy. Yeah. And eventually, we, we, we can play with really bringing the arms forward. And you can come up with the elbows. See how, and you can widen, especially if the shoulders are uncomfortable, widen. Yeah. And we're hanging out. Now I'm just going to roll a bit to the Lean to the right, roll my head to the left. Lean to, I'll move my arm out of the way. Do you see, I lean to the left and I roll my neck, my face starts to look to the right. I'm just gonna roll from side to side. I just made this up, I never did this before. So hopefully when you're playing, you'll, you'll be surprised by, suddenly you, you realize, oh, I could move. I could go here. So we're just going to roll through. Yeah. Tail going up. So I could just, I just could feel. So it's been some minutes. And suddenly I could feel that my pelvic floor and my sit bones and the powerful structures of the legs are stopping holding and preparing to move. And they're just letting the weight go through the bones and they are now responding. So I feel different even here up. I feel quite different. <coughs> yeah. So let's come back up. Let's come back up. Undo your toes. Be on your palms or your elbows as you like. And again, let's just notice what's different. Let's let the spine drop through. So I can feel that close to my sacrum where I've had injury and I don't move so much. It's dropping a lot more now, just since play. And then here, yeah, it's less achy. So this is good. Antler and tail down, squirrel's tail and antler up. And whenever you want to letting yourself rock and then just letting a little so the chest, the spine, the belly, hanging, the tail and antlers up. And then, I don't know if you can hear the church bell. Village bell. Okay, so that's that's something to play with and to invent with. It's safe. It's always healing the back because it's putting the sacrum and the lumbers and the organs in front. It's putting them in a good direction. It's helping them move and it's taking them out of the place where we're kind of holding and stuck and we don't realize it. 
So it's very, very good. And if you do have lower back troubles, hip troubles, knee troubles, um, this is very safe and it's really healing the back. It's like a cabinet maker comes and you say, look, can you fix this drawer? It's not moving. And so a little bit, so that the drawer can slide in and out of the cabinet. When we go forward, that's what we're asking the vertebrae to do. We're asking them to be able to slide forward. And then from cabinet to surface, each drawer is an, is an acrobat that's hanging from the one above. And so it goes forward and then forward. And we lose, we lose this capacity, you know, because we're kind of stuck and then we jam things and then so we're just slowly making this move. So the back bend is a very deep and mystical, wonderful, wonderful movement that we're moving towards, as is the front bend, but we're a little bit addicted, you know, to lying on our backs and to child pose. And if your back is struggling, you shouldn't be doing that only. You should be doing some of this. Okay. That said, we're going to undo the toes and we are going to go back. Now, instead of just stopping there where I'm leaning into my bum, I'm going to keep going. And you can see my tail starts to go down. My pelvis starts to go towards my heels. And I let myself drop through. Let myself drop through. Now, take your time. As you drop through, you may discover or you can explore this on your own when you have lots of time. Um, you may discover that your heels, your ankles are not happy. I'm gonna look at this a bit more in a moment. So you can put something under the ankles. <coughs> if you've never done any of these things, I would do them all because they, you know, when you have time and you just wanna play by yourself, because this is, if you're gonna watch TV or look out the window, have a cup of tea, <clears throat> this is wonderful because it's actually making the ankle do something. Or you may discover that you're tight behind the knees and up into the hamstrings. So this can also be very, very helpful. All of this is about going forward. Of course, if your knees hurt, pad them. Some people have a pinching feeling on the front here, the front of the groins has to do usually with the way the head of the femur sits inside the little cave, the acetabulum. And uh, for some people, because of the position of the head of the femur, when we go forward, it pinches. That's not the only reason there's flare. And I've noticed that women uh, have this sensation more than men. So you can always curl, roll up a blanket or a sweater here so that you... Okay. And then when you go forward, you don't just want to tip forward and lose your roots here. You actually want to set it up in such a way that your bum, which is heavy usually, is continuing to give you the feeling that you're rooting here and then you're kind of dropping off this way. So you can stay up a bit. So I need to do that because this is so tight. It doesn't let go right away. So you stay up a bit. And you breathe. And then after four or five hours of waiting, you should discover, you know, that it's dropped through. So let's have a few breaths with the legs. They don't need to be touching, but kind of close to each other. So let's just feel into that. Yeah, go through. Touching is always helpful. Learning to just the minute you touch, all sorts of possibilities open up. So I dropped a lot more through. A lot, lot more. I'm just going to rock a little from side to side. Wonderful. As you root through pelvis and legs and you feel your spine dropping through, then quieten down and let your jaw 
hang off your jaw and your tongue. It's like this is what we did last week. We want to let the visceral space release, release through here because of whatever our habits of all that stuff shortening. So you're rooting, you're hanging forward, and then you really want to let this drop through. That's why usually I'm up for a bit, and then I lean my forehead on my hands or on something if, if I'm even tighter. And then I slowly let me wobble the head and I'm waiting for and then letting my jaw and my tongue hang through. Breathe. Trust your own sensations. So your body is telling you what's going on. We don't need to load things with meaning, but we can rest on sensation. It is actually restful. You can let the head wobble. Yeah. So I can feel here where this is my mandible, where the lower jaw is attaching to the cranium here way back near the ear, that's where the jaw. I can feel, I can feel that the weight wants to let it drop and I can feel on the left side, it needs more time. So, you know, my jaw maybe is tighter like that. So I don't need to be symmetrical, but then I'm talking now, but when you hang, you wanna let this hang off. It has a profound effect on this world all around here of how the head sits on the neck and its mobility. And of course, every class I've been spending time releasing the pelvic floor here for this movement, but we always end up looking at some kind of release here, neck to jaw to head, because they go together. They were, we were one, two. So we wanna, we're always, we're like this most amazing bottle of champagne, excuse the image, with two corks, one below. And we want to learn to decork and let that champagne out, share it with others. So that was my anti-COVID um, image for the day. Yeah. Wonderful. So we've been like this, we were leaning back, we spent some time, we curled the toes under. And then we went back this way with the knees relatively close. So maybe you came up and you were watching as I was talking, but let's widen the legs. Let's widen the legs and drop through again. It's different, it's a different movement. So as you drop through, your leg will internally rotate a bit or a lot, it doesn't matter. You don't need to make that happen, but don't, don't fight it at first. We're just, it's like we're just going to drop through here and we're going to come through the up. Now remember I said that my jaw was releasing, so continue please, and one side was more tense, but this is everywhere. So as I go down, as I listen into my hips, my right hip feels it's like lowering a bucket down a well and it just goes all the way until it hits the water. But my left hip, it's all cloudy and muddy and I can't tell, I can, it, it's different and it's not releasing down. So I don't need to push it, but just, I, I acknowledge it. So, I, you know, it's part of a, a system of injury I had many years ago, but I can feel. Through the weight, without symmetricalizing my body, I just let myself go through. So I just wobble a bit and something changes. All the way through. Letting the letting letting the jaw hang. Literally letting the tongue hang out. Just let our attention go from the spine through the shoulders into the arms. 
And as you release through, imagine that you're, you're, that you realize and you know that your forearm is gloved and that the glove is a little tight on you. So as you release, imagine as you feel the weight of these parts on the floor, imagine that this glove is loosening up and these two long bones have room to breathe and slide and be with you. So we drop through and we just we allow that. Yeah, I'm noticing that a little bit of support in front of us. Just a minute. And I'm breathing. So I'm not, if I pop up at my elbows, I'm going to be tightening here, but I'm just letting that all come down out through the palms, out through the fingers. Bring your hands back towards your knees. And we're just going to roll up. If it's uncomfortable, don't. But otherwise, we're just going to roll up. Good. <coughs> Wonderful. So we've been practicing for about half an hour. I know I've been talking in between, but don't need to do much. This is quite profound. And so let's just add the other side of this movement. So remember, you can be tail up, squirrel with the tail up, or tail down, which is classically called child pose. Okay, and you can have knees together or apart. So let's tuck the toes in and let's lean back with the tail up. Let's let the spine through. And then we're just going to push from the toes and lean through as we reach through with the antlers. Yeah, wonderful, all the way through. Now, the tricky bit is to play with the fact that you could release, you could just hang completely down, which is okay if it doesn't bother you, it's not, it's not terrible, but it's, it's not as rich as having a bit of toe push or toe life playing and, and see when I <coughs> use my toes a bit, my pelvis doesn't want to drop all the way through because it's, it's getting another kind of champagne coming up through my legs and it's, it's supporting it and it's waking up my belly muscle and I'm not squeezing my squirrel's tail, but I have that kind of support and that allows me to travel up through the chest, I'm going to widen my hands a bit, up through the chest and the breastbone and the ribs and up into the throat, up behind the tongue, all the way up, antlers, antlers, tail, tail, toes, toes. Wonderful. And then I'm just going to, now, don't flex with your tummy, don't squeeze with your bum. Just push with your hands and reach with your tail. Don't you see my voice didn't change at all. You don't need to do anything in between and you slide through. And then when you're through, you push with your toes and reach with your antlers and you come through this way. And then we slide back and slide forward. One more time, just sliding back. You can through forward. And then we reach back with our heels and the knees come off the ground. And here we are having an amazing conversation with ourselves about the joy of yoga and how we're probably going to be here for hours, hours. So reach back with your heels. Watch. If I stop reaching with heels, tail, and antlers, then I'm gripping, you know, and then I'm at the gym. I'm at the gym. Yeah. Reach through. Reach with the head. Reach with the antlers. 
I mean, we are locked up. What am I talking about? So this is perfect. All these crazy people on the planet are locked up doing yoga. It's fantastic. Okay, we're going to do the whole sequence quickly, but not um, rushing. On our hands and knees, we let the spine drop, the tail and the antlers go up. Then we let the tail and the antlers go down. Then up again, and I'm moving, and I lean back into my bum and I drop my elbows and I drop my forehead and my antlers are in the forest floor and I'm at prayer the antlered squirrel is praying and then I walk back I untuck my toes and I go back into baby antlered squirrel and I'm letting this drop and then I walk forward and then I tuck my toes under and I push from my toes and I reach with my antlers and I come through, opening up through the chest and antlers and I reach back with my right heel and back with my left heel. And here we are. And then I just bend my knees and I let myself go up into what was once dog, but is now and a squirrel with its tail way, 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 way up. And I'm bending my toes, yeah, bending my toes. So you can straighten the leg, but I, I do it slowly and playfully from the ball of the big toe. I let the leg, because I don't want to rush into this, which is the big thing I talked about at the beginning of the class. I want to be able to, just let the legs lengthen, but to keep the pelvis free, 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 free. Yeah, not performing at all. Just remembering that life is about participation. It's not about performance uh, and how am I doing and all of that. So that's what, that's that, is what being embodied is all about is that we are we just tumble into life and we're all we're all in this together sometimes we can look at each other and say that was beautiful or do more that or do more that but we don't need to look at ourselves all the time all the time <laughs> so go get a, a blanket or a, a cushion or something <coughs> yeah. And make a little seat for yourselves. And I'll be right back. Okay, so you have your your thingy, your meditation cushion or your rolled up blanket. <laughs> you need you need more than you think. We always need more than we think. And then we need less than we think. Here we go. So the reason uh, the reason to have a support to sit on. We're going to look at feet and ankle the last 20 minutes. But is that uh, even if you're, you know, very open and bendy pelvis, legs to pelvis to spine, the, the pelvis will always tend to want to go a little bit this way. And then it's fine, you know, you can straighten up. But in the beginning, I think it's just better to have the support <laughs> because you once, if you're trapped in that and no one has pointed this out, this is the opposite of what we've just been doing. And that is that. 
you know and then i go to sit and i'm always I'm always 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 kind of reinforcing this doesn't matter the pelvis pattern here is that i'm even i am doing that and then i go to sit and i've made all these folding movements in my lumbers and there i am you know then the next email i write it's going to be a horrible one because i'm grumpy and folding and what we what we want to learn is not to bend in the lumbers but to bend in the pelvis you know i think this is the movement that the human family doesn't realize it's lost this movement did you see bending here and it doesn't matter if you're more like that still you want to bend here if you're more like that still you want to bend here you don't want to brace and then sit down and brace you want to make this folding and can you see here's the ground my yoga mat so squirrel with the tail up that's you want to get into that as much as possible okay so the, the support the support helps the, the the sorry the support the thing to sit on helps because it lifts us up even if you're very very bendable you know if you bend very easily forward then you can come away from this in a minute but just just let's start so you start up <laughs> your legs are in front of you and wide if it's really a struggle go higher or don't worry if the legs are not straight it can be like this okay we're up yeah and then i want you to see if you can roll the pelvis this way and this way this is the same thing we just did on our hands and knees yeah. roll back roll forward close your eyes and feel inside so nobody's watching you it doesn't matter how big it is the movement just feel if you you know, if you can roll over your sit bones, imagine your sit bones and pelvis are like a wheel and it rolls forward, and then it rolls back, rolls forward, and it rolls back. And then just see where you are. Maybe things have settled and eased. Okay, so we're going to bend the leg. We're going to bend the leg and we're just going to take the foot. You could be here. You could be all the way up here. It doesn't matter. You know, you're going to take the foot and you're going to bring your, this is the, the shin bone, the front of the tibia here, this hard line. And it's a wonderful thing to get your fingers into. Everyone should do this. It's another thing you can do for world peace. It's really important. And you just let your fingers sink down as you come down to these two big novels one belongs to the tibia one to the fibula and you come down onto this upper ankle area where the foot does that and you just let your fingers sink in there now you don't need tension you just need to lean even if you're up here it doesn't matter you just lean your hand and what you're doing is you're bringing awareness and mapping into an area that <coughs> really doesn't move on a lot of us. Now I've gone around to the back, the sides. Yeah. Then I get hold of my toes. If you can't, you can just do it with the foot. But if I can get hold of my, or you can use a, a yoga mat or a blanket like this and just pull up. I'm going to get hold of my toes and I'm just going to pull my foot up, rest my heel down and just pull my foot up. <coughs> Rock around a bit and then release. Now we're going to do the other side. Yeah. So now we could just be doing stuff because I'm saying do this or do that. But it's never that helpful. What you want to do is receive what I'm doing. And as you make it your own, or even in order to make it your own, doing needs to couple, couple with sensing. So I can feel that my breath changes, you know, so many things. And I can get curious. You know, you might end up looking at 
<coughs> a book, an anatomy book, or starting to look at other people's ankles. Yeah. So just letting my fingers sink into this world and then pull it up. Yeah. Let go of performing the idea, oh, should it be higher? Or, you know, just sense and do what feels good and you can go to the limit of something. It's, it, the more you bend your toe, the better, you know? Degree of bend has nothing to do with sanctity, but because we're all different, but we all need to, you know, so even if your toe only bends that much, you know, bend it, get your fingers in there. And all of this you can also do in the bath, of course. That would be too complicated to do a film like that. Yeah. But science, wonderful. Okay, so now going to take the thingy away and you're going to sit on your foot. Oh, I know what, what's different. I'm not wearing my glasses. Yeah. So let's, I'm going to sit on my left foot. I'm going to bring it under. I'm going to lift up. Don't be worried. If something's painful, just stop. I'm going to put my heel, my left heel of the left foot, my heel of the left foot under my left buttock. And then I'm going to slowly sit down so my foot is across my bum. Yeah. And then, so I'm on a soft carpet. So it, actually, it, the hard floor is also nice. But if it's painful because of the bones and the way you are, then make sure you have some. You can just sit on a cushion. And then I'm going to slowly move around. Now, if this is befuddling you and I'm not there to help you, just Close your eyes, you know, even if you're up here or you're over here and you don't know, close your eyes and try to let the weight of your body rest on some of your foot. Some of your foot. And if you can, roll around. This is, I'll show you in a moment, this is a profoundly natural movement for the foot. Not sitting on the foot, I mean, unless you're Asian and it's your culture to do things like this, but for the foot, it's profoundly natural. And as we roll around on it, it's like we're moving all the little river stones that are in the river of the foot. We're moving them against each other. And it's obvious because a foot that is awake is a body that is awake because we stand on this foot all day long. And the foot shouldn't be becoming a hoof. It's a foot with toes and it's amazing. So now I've come all the way over this way. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. And then sometimes you clunk over a tendon that goes kadunk over a bone, nothing terrible. Okay. And there it is. Hopefully it's still attached to your leg. So have a look. We were just making this movement earlier, right? And massaging and pulling up. <clears throat> so this is the movement that the upper ankle does. It's the thing that propels us forward. Well, we have a lower ankle here <clears throat> where this bone in between these two long bones sits on the heel, known as the talus and the calcaneum. Now this under ankle doesn't move this way on this orthogonal grid. It moves on a sideway rotational grid, this way and this way. Yeah, look how beautiful. So we don't stand on this stable thing. We stand on this incredibly wobbly surfboard. And in fact, when you start to do that, you will see, look at my foot. It looks like a propeller. My heel is coming this way. My toe is going that way. So then we realize we stand on this fin, this propeller, this surfboard that surfs the land. And this one is funnily enough, it's the one that we critique. Oh, oh, I'm pronating so much and I have weak you know, ankles and I'm always falling, but it's, it's really, it's there for a reason, this movement. And when we sit on it, we are amplifying that we're getting in 
and asking the foot to do that. <coughs> so let's do it on the other side. <clears throat> I get up, I put my bum on my heel, go easy. If this is as far as you go, that's fine. And then I start to go across the foot towards sitting on with my other buttock on my foot. And then, you know, as you get confident, you, you, I mean, if you need to put blankets between your bum and your foot, that's fine. If you need to be higher up, all of this is fine. And then I'm sitting on my foot and I'm rolling around. I'm rolling around. Yeah. And the weight, you know, try, trying to slow down, letting the eyes close. So you are using the weight, takes time. Sometimes I don't use the word grounding because we've added so much stuff to grounding and you're grounded and you're not grounding. And, but you have to see if what helps you. Is it the weight that's going to the ground or is it the ground that is calling you, that is grounding you? So how does that, which direction and what works for you? So the weight, the sense of the water, the heaviness of my bum or my foot, that's the thing. That's the wonderful thing to roll around. And you can see, or maybe you can feel that my foot is doing this, this movement, which is wonderful, wonderful movement. And the foot was built to rotate like that. You know, that's why the big toe is there, that we rotate onto the big toe and then we push from here and we walk. <laughs> that moment there, that moment there. And that moment there is coupled with this moment here, the tail, do you see? And if we lose that, then we are no longer becoming elders. We're just becoming elderly like this. And eventually we're monkeys because monkeys don't, you know, monkeys don't have that. They don't have that arch they're here. No longer moving like this. Which is kind of fun, but I think it would take me a long time to get anywhere in this uh, possibility. So we did both feet. So take your time, maybe you've stood up or you're just finishing. Take your time to complete that and then do come to standing. Yeah. Okay. So if we just let the arms and shoulders swing, it's a delicious movement. I could do this for hours, hours. Heavy arms, shoulders swinging, feeling how the ribs back there move. And there is a moment when I'm here, there is a moment when I'm like this. Ah. So just letting that happen. Try not to work with the muscles. But of course, it's already started to happen in my feet. If I really let go, do you see, I start to rock on my feet. And that's the movement we just talked about. I start to rock through. And in fact, I could make the whole movement come from my feet. So see if you can let your feet be the things that propels and swivels you. Yeah, this is wonderful because you're actually activating this motion. I don't know if you can see my foot on the floor, but you're making this happen and you're making it talk through the whole body. Whole body. We're gonna close with the triangle pose. So I'm just stepping forward. Now, if you always make a small step or you always make a huge step, you're always going to predicate one or the other of those rotational things we just talked about on the foot. So actually, triangle poses are all, there's millions of them, 
just the size of the step and whether you bend the front knee or not. And all of those sizes are fantastic. So take, take a little step, stay on your back foot. If you come onto the front foot, it's another set of poses. Stay on your back foot, back foot, step forward. Yeah. And then we're just gonna, just gonna throw the net out over the lake, see what we catch. And you, you can let yourself swing it. We're just being playful at the moment. So you, you can let yourself swing up. And let your arms come up. And as they come up, they lift your upper body or your lower body. And then let's try to do it where the foot doesn't swing so much and the pelvis doesn't move so much. But it's just the upper body. So like that. And I let my, my upper body lifts. That's what arms and elbows are doing a lot of. They're lifting me. And that's what allows me to have some rotation. Who cares how much? Just let it in. Yeah. And this is actually carrot pose. Carrot pose. Carrot. Carrot, that vegetable that you grow in the ground, the root. Why? Because carrot is very easy to remember. Red root from here down and big green stem and it's turned. And you really want the root and the stem. That's what allows the rotation. Yeah. So let's do where the whole foot and pelvis go. Yeah. And then let's do it where the foot and the pelvis don't go. And you can kind of hold yourself out there. Don't look and shape so much. Don't look and shape so much. Just the pelvis didn't run after your upper body. So the pelvis is facing forward, rooting, heels, but the upper body has lifted and around the belly button, you have this counter rotation one way and even deeper counter rotation when I rotate across my front leg. Yeah, just take that in. Rooting over your heel, you can close your eyes or open. Yeah. And then suddenly something lets go. I could feel my back shoulder just opening up and I have more room to go. Yeah. You can be strong, you can be soft. Yeah. But make sure however you're doing it, that the energy travels out through your fingers. Yeah. Every finger is a pathway up the arm. The thumb pathway is much more to here and the little finger pathway much more to here. The thumb and first finger are picking and grasping and doing and we lose the last two fingers which are really about a sense of weight. And the weight is related to the weight of the shoulder blade. Yeah. So those, you know, that whole theme of, oh my gosh, are my shoulder blades winging or not? Very often what's happened is we've lost this part of the arm. So as you go, just let that open up. Yeah, let that open up. And then we take a step and we start to throw the net. We can swivel across the foot, you know, can do really, really terrible yoga like this. This is like, this is a triangle pose that you could be failed and excommunicated from ever doing yoga again. But no, why not do it? I would just do it, I would do it in front of all the judges in the world. But if you do that all the time, then you don't actually get that rotation. So then letting the foot root. And this time my pelvis stays looking forward and it's a lot easier for me on this side. Yeah. And the arms and the swinging. Yeah. Something about windmills. Yeah. And you can go for a walk like this. You can walk and swing and walk and swing. Yeah. You can walk backwards. And just coming back to being on both feet. Hmm. 
Just close your eyes. If you if you get unbalanced, you just go to a wall. Otherwise, just close your eyes for a moment. Put your hands on your hips. And just come back to that first thing we looked at. Just letting the tail drop and the pelvis drop back. Just take that in. And forward. We rush past and we put so much language and evaluation on all of this, but they're beautiful movements. Everything could be so beautiful and so interesting. And it can be clean of meaning, if you know what I mean, just light and clear. Yeah. And then I just let my arms hang. And I notice where I am. My weight is falling on my feet. Just letting it be like that. And my head is just being taken up. So there's a down and an up, and a front and a back, and a side to side. And a huge, lovely thank you to all of you. So these classes, if you're new, they, they get popped up onto a page and they're all available for you. They're in three groups, more or less, but you'll see that, you know, go round and round. And it's given us an opportunity to try to understand how to film with such poor internet out in the countryside here. We've, we've, we've now cracked it with the camera, but we're trying to find the right mic that doesn't make the whole thing, that isn't too heavy in bites. I don't really understand it fully, but something like that. So there, there we are. Happy practicing, look after yourselves. And um, if you are able to make a donation, even a very small one, please, it's just helpful. It helps us to continue to share meditation and uh, these other contemplative practices with people who aren't as lucky as us to have discovered them. So, bye-bye.